morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, welcome to Facebook Live, a coffee Q&A. Um, I posted about this a couple weeks ago, or last week, I don't even know, time is all blurring together, um, and you guys said you would be super into this. So I am super excited to see you guys this morning. I will say hello as you hop on. Please say hello as well if you are watching live with me, if you are catching the replay. Feel free to say hello below as well, and know that we will be doing these every Friday for a little bit, seeing how they go over. If you guys love them, if you guys show up, if you guys are here, if you guys are digging it, um, obviously I will continue them, but if nobody comes to hang out, then um, I don't know if we'll continue them. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things. We try it out. We see if, as a group we dig it, and we'll keep going, and if we don't, that is cool too, obviously. So um, I've got my coffee here. Duh. Oh, someone hopped on. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, I made it a little hot. Hi, Shannon. Good morning. Good morning. Um, your question made me laugh. So I was like, what the fictional characters? So I'm excited to answer that one. Uh, maybe I'll answer that one first. So I'm going to pull up the thread here. And if you guys have more questions as you're hopping on, please say them below as well. Share them with me. Um, I'm going to, I have time allotted for about an hour today. So if you guys have questions, Ask them anything around business, anything around money, anything around um, clients, anything around sex, relationships, intimacy, connection, femininity, sensuality, whatever it might be. Those are kind of my big two overviewing topics I talk a lot about. Um, but if you have random questions like Shannon had as well, bring on the questions. Let's have fun with this this morning. Good morning. Hi, Joanna. Oh, Shannon, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hi, Erica. Welcome, welcome. Um, so I'm going to pull up the question thread that you guys had posted some questions earlier. I'm going to answer those first. We will start moving forward. My assistant will be posting the Q&A graphic on Tuesdays. So you guys have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning, early, early morning to post questions. And then I will go live at 10 a.m. Um, every Friday. So hi, Sarah. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. So let me pull up the questions here. How are you guys feeling this morning? How is life? Okay, let's see here. Oh, I don't want to pull that up. Then I will just hear myself talk. Okay, so I'm going to uh, answer uh, Shanna's question first because it cracked me up. I wish I could have music playing. I just feel like if you were at my house on a ra random Friday morning, um, there would be music playing. There's essential oils going. There's can Oh, I needed to light my candle. There's candles going. Um... I just ate an English muffin, Ezekiel, the Ezekiel uh, cinnamon raisin English muffins. You guys are literally life-changing if you want to change your life. Um, I look forward to it every morning with my coffee. I give it my, to myself as a reward when I finish my workout. <gasps> Jesus. Whew. I don't know who spiked my coffee, but obviously I am not super awake this morning. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so Shannon asked a really funny question that made me laugh, and then I'm going to answer the more businessy ones as well. For Joanna and Erica, if you guys have questions as well, please share them below. I'd love to answer your guys' questions too. Um, so Shannon asked me, you're stuck in a bunker. Which two fictional characters would you pick to have with you? And this took me like, a, I was like, well, I don't freaking know. Like, I'm not good at these like funny questions, um, oddly enough, because I'm like super random and fun and sassy in real life. But like, I'm really bad at these questions. Hi, Kelly. Kelly, I feel like it has been 18 years. How the hell are you? So I would say for me, if I had to have two characters, I'm not going to look at the second part of your question yet because I feel like it'll make me pick differently. I would pick the Green Arrow, Oliver Queen, you guys. I would pick him. And I would pick um, probably Nick from New Girl because he cracks me up. That's who I would pick. Okay. The follow-up to my question is, what about those characters do you want to embody in your business? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> these are not business characters. These are not who I would pick um, to have in my entrepreneurial life. This is like me just like if I wasn't an entrepreneur, I was stuck in a bunker. I was just a normal gal off the street having fun. Um, that is who I would pick the green arrow because I just feel like he's very protective and he will, um, I mean, he's nice to look at and he's, just like I would feel safe, you know, because if I'm in a bunker, I just feel like I would maybe feel a little scared. So I feel like that would be helpful. And then uh, Nick from New Girl just makes me laugh. And I feel like if I'm stuck in a bunker, I just want to laugh my ass off. So he cracks me up. As far as what about those characters do you want to embody in your business? 
Um, I mean, maybe the green arrow, like I want my clients to feel safe with me. I want my clients to feel protected. Um, I will go to bat for my clients and back. So I definitely like that feeling. Um, and then with Nick, like I want to have fun. Like I want to have a hell of a lot of fun with my clients. We like literally we have so much fun um, together. And so as much as we get business shit done and we talk about relationships and, and all this juicy stuff, right? We really dig deep. Um, there's calls where there's tears. There's calls where there's, you know, we go really deep into things. But then there's times where we just have a hell of a lot of fun and we laugh together. We use, you know, gifts and we're just laughing all the time too. So I would say those would be two qualities that I would want to have in there. So good morning, Emily. Hi, welcome, welcome. Um, Emily too, Kelly, if you guys have any questions, post them in the thread. Um, anything, nothing is off limits as you have seen. So I'm going to answer the questions that were on the thread from earlier today. So Sarah asks, how do you prioritize tasks? So let's say you have a task that will bring monetary value, a task to build the audience, and a task to help you share your journey. Which do you pick if you don't have time for all three? It's a beautiful question. Um, my initial gut reaction to this question would be, what is the goal in this season? What's the desired outcome? For example, there are certain seasons I primarily focus on building my audience. I focus on how can I make new connections? I focus on how can I get new eyes on my things and my stuff and help new people? Um, I think one of the problems that we make is we, we run a business or we've run businesses before and we just always are trying to sell something and that just doesn't work. And we're trying to sell something to the same five people over and over and over again. You know, the 14th times the charm, like that's a bunch of bullshit. Um, you know, for some people, yes, that's true, but I don't think it's you heart, you know, harping on the same few people. I think it's so important to make sure, especially new in business, especially as you're rebranding, especially as you're building credibility and like know and trust is to Build, 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 grow, 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 expand, expand, expand. Get more eyes on your stuff. Get into Facebook groups. Be present. Be helpful. Serve. Add value. Build relationships. Build genuine connection with people. Solve their problems, right, for free before you're even asking for the sale. So I think a lot of people forget, like, I know I've had, I've said this on a live video the other day. A lot of people are telling me, like, oh, my God, you just exploded. And while I, I do believe that's true, the truth of the matter is I've been building an audience for four years. I've been in different businesses. I've rebuilt my audience. I've done a shit ton of free things, right? I do free value all of the time. Um, there are seasons where I, I'm plugged into being interviewed on a lot of podcasts. There are seasons where I, me and my friend Autumn earlier this year, we hosted um, a webinar got new eyes on our stuff, built our email list. There was a, a free summit that we brought like eight of our favorite people in. We were both in Jacqueline. Good morning. Jacqueline did a summit um, earlier this year and Autumn and I were both in that. Like we were so focused for the first, I'd say four, five, six months of the year on growing, growing, growing new eyes, new eyes, new eyes, because the people that have followed me from health coaching that I'm just expecting to buy my business coaching, they're not my ideal clients. My ideal client has evolved just as I have evolved and I need new people in front of me that I can serve, that I can solve problems for, that I can tr you know, build trust with and then they'll be ready to buy, right? It's like, so what are you focused on in this season? There are seasons where I'm focused on a launch. So if I only had one of these tasks, um, it would be bringing something that would bring monetary value, like having a sales post or having some kind of expert uh, teacher post where I'm teaching something, I'm adding value, I'm giving someone a breakthrough before they even buy. And then the natu natural next step for them would be to join the mastermind or hire me as a one-on-one -on -one coach or whatever it might be. And then the season of you know sharing your journey, I think that all comes in kind of sprinkled throughout, but a lot in the beginning. Like you build expertise based on what you know, based on what you've done, right? We we have clients who are where we once stood. Like I can look at my clients and say, literally I have stood where you stand. I feel you, I hear you, and I share my journey. I share those pieces a lot more in the beginning and now sprinkled throughout so that they can relate to me on a human level. Cause it's hard for them sometimes to relate to five figure months. They're like, I don't even have $500 in my business right now? How am I gonna get to where you are? So I bring them back a little bit to the journey of when I was making less than $500 a month, when I was making less than $2,000 a month. Do you see what, does that help, Sarah? Let me know if that helps. What are these uh, questions here? Yay, yay, yay. Kelly, I miss you too, yay, I'm doing good. I got laid off three weeks ago and learning to embrace this time for me. Everything happens for a reason. I know you probably hate hearing that right now, um, but trust the process. Divine timing, right? You are always supported. Sending you so much love. Hi, Olivia. Welcome, welcome. Sarah, thank you. Heads in the right place. Trying to walk before I run. 100%. So 
I mean, there's people that come out the gate swinging with selling something. Totally cool if that works for you. Um, I just know for me that doesn't work for me, and I am all about building longevity. So I think a lot of times we start a business and we focus on, um, you know, what's my short-term game here, and it has to be a long game. Building a business is a long over your lifetime thing, and so be patient, trust the process, keep going. Um, Olivia asks, how do you focus on one thing to talk about, one niche, when you're multi multi-passionate and you want to share everything? How do you develop a brand that's inclusive to someone who is multi-passionate? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. I am going to be honest. Um, Olivia, I love spending my mornings with you. Your energy is exactly what I I just love you. I can't wait. You guys, literally the Mastermind groups op group opens today and we start on Monday. I'm so excited. So. How do I focus on one thing to talk about when you're multi-passionate and want to share everything? Okay, here's what I believe to be true. This is my opinion, okay? This is what I have seen to work um, for myself and my clients. Start with one thing. The truth is we're all multi-passionate. We all have multiple passions. I'm passionate about my health. I'm passionate about my relationship. I'm passionate about my business. I'm passionate about money. I'm passionate about sex. I'm passionate about crystals. I'm passionate about spirituality. I'm passionate about um, femininity. I'm passionate about all of the things. Okay. All of the things. And what happens a lot of times is we try to do all of the things and be all of the things right away. So we come out the gate swinging. Here we are. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur and I want to help you with everything. I want to help this person with this thing and you with this thing. And like, I'm the jack of all trades come to me. And what I believe is that that's like going to a restaurant where the menu's this thick, right? It's this thick. They have pizza, they have sushi, they have Chinese food, they have um, burgers, they have sandwiches, they have, you know, oh, the cheesecake's really good. They have a certain kind of drink that's super popular. They have pasta, they have all of the things. And you're overwhelmed. You're like, uh, uh, like this literally happened the other day. I was at BJ's with um, some of my girlfriends and then one of their husbands came with us for dinner. And we go to BJ's and if you guys have ever been to BJ's Brew House, they're everywhere. It's a chain. Um, they have a menu that's literally this thick. They have 18 kinds of things that they're specialties that they have. They have the menu of anyone can find anything on their menu. And it literally overwhelmed her husband to the point where he was like, I don't like places like this. I'm going to leave. Because he's like, if you specialize in everything, I don't trust you. Because the truth is, there's like one specialty. Now, I'm not saying, Olivia, that you have to pick one specialty, one niche market forever. I'm saying pick one, really, really, really hone in on that very specifically for three to six months, sometimes up to a year. Really establish credibility there, really establish expertise there. And then when you're ready to shift, we can transition your brand. We can transition your niche. Because you're, you're going to change and evolve just as your brand is going to change and evolve. Your ideal client is going to change and evolve. You will have different passions, different um, subjects, different niche markets come into play at different times. But when we first start, if we're being all the things for all of the people, they're overwhelmed. Because the truth is, like, are you going to go to a doctor that specializes in everything when you have adrenal fatigue? Are you going to find a doctor who really specializes on stress and fatigue and adrenal fatigue and thyroid issues, right? You're going to pay the person that's going to specialize in something. It's why I don't, I rarely in posts and live video anymore talk about my health because yes, my health as an entrepreneur is so important, a hundred percent. But if I'm just talking about health all the time, people come to me for health problems, then they want to hire me for health. And I'm like, oh, I don't do that. I don't do that. Like there's someone else, else out there that's better for them that will specialize in their health. Health for me is just like one of the things that kind of comes in when I'm working with my clients, but it's not what I focus on. Does that make sense? Okay. So being multi-passionate, we all are. Pick one thing, one focus for like three to six months, test it out, feel it out. How does it feel? Are you jazzed to work with these clients on this specific issue? Are you solving their problems? Are you loving this? Are people digging it? And then we can shift and evolve from there. Lauren Everett talks about it a lot too, the Skinny Confidential blog. She said that for three years, she blogged about health and fitness. Three years every single day before she started adding in skin. Then 
excuse me, she added in makeup. Then she added in business. Now she has a podcast. She has different things that she speaks on. Then she was talking about this over here. And then, you know, all she talks about all of the things now, but she's built a foundation that is solid of like, know, and trust and credibility and expertise with her audience. And if you're the expert on everything, you're the expert on nothing. We have to pick one thing at a time to really go all in on. For three years, I was a health coach. Then I did life coaching for like three months. Then I realized, you know what? I freaking shit my pants over helping women with their businesses. I transitioned into business coaching. I've added in the relationship piece over the last year, right? Does that help? Does that make sense? Let me know. Let me know. Good morning, Kara. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Taylor. So many of my favorite people. Um, okay, I've got a couple more questions. If you guys want to share yours below, I've got a couple more questions here, and then I will read these ones here. So Sarah says, how do you feel comfortable breaking the mold if your company has a certain way of doing things, but those things make you feel bleh? <laughs> I love the puke face. Okay, here is the thing. You just got to do it. There's not really a beautiful way of doing it. You can do it with grace. You can do it with um, being kind. I don't think it's, you know, when I was doing things differently in my business, I didn't really blast it. I just did things differently. In all honesty, um, I would go to some trainings um, with my team, but I would take what I want and I would leave the rest. I would take what I want. I would leave the rest. I would respect my upline. She ran things very differently than me. And she was one of my very best friends. We butted heads a lot. Um, but when I went into it with in the intention of being loving and kind and graceful, and I would just say, I'm not going to do that. Like, I love you, and I know that works for you, and that that's awesome for you. I love that. Um, keep going. Woo-woo, rah-rah. But for me, it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel sustainable. So therefore, yes, I want to be successful. Here are my goals. But here's how I'm going to do things a little bit differently. And I hope we can agree to disagree meet each other halfway. Like, you can have a very adult conversation, right? You can get super, super, super in your heart about it and just love that person, but do things differently. The truth is you will challenge the status quo. Every single one of my clients challenges the status quo. They're all doing things differently, no matter what industry they're in. And I think that that's what creates game changers. I think that followers and people that just continue to do the same thing, same thing, same thing, and don't find what their edge is, it's not sustainable because you're a different human than me. So even how I run my business, yours is going to be a little bit different. We might do some things that are similar, right? I teach my clients a process that I've done, but they do it in their own way, their own voice, their own style. Their alignment feels different sometimes than my alignment, and that's okay. We can all be successful. We can all thrive. We can all grow together. So be respectful, be kind, be graceful, um, but do things your way and know that you are the business owner. The, the company, yes, I mean, and with network marketing, it's a little tricky because they technically control your income, but you are the business owner. Treat your business like you are the business owner. Make decisions like you are the business owner, okay? Just gonna, it's just like a, you just kind of have to do it right? Um, okay, let's see. And everyone, more questions, please. More questions. Keep them coming. Okay, Elizabeth says, my question is, do I narrow down my audience to just moms or does it make sense to say, I help women reconnect to their creative soul because I help women, period. I have both moms and women that come to me. A little unsure of that. Um, you could go either way, in all honesty. You could try just women and see how it works. Here's the thing. When you have a niche market, when you have an ideal client and a certain brand, you'll attract, like for me, for example, I don't work with moms really. However, I have clients who are moms. So there's people that will resonate with your message and the, the stuff that you're teaching and they'll want to learn your process and they'll come in even though I'm not a mom, right? I have mom clients, but I don't market to moms. So you could try just women and see how that feels. I would maybe narrow it down a little bit like, you know, what age range is she? Is she working? Is she not? Is she in a nine to five? Is she a stay at home mom? Like what are the different things? Like what a little bit more niche down. Um, but for me, like I, I know I help entrepreneurial women. So my people are already entrepreneurs and I'm helping them reach a next level in their business, reignite the passion in their relationship. Right? So I would just think, try women. If it starts to feel like it's too bleh, all over the place and too broad, then you can try to just go to moms. Or you can help women and maybe you have one offer that's specifically for moms, right? Maybe you have one offer. So like for me, for example, if I helped entrepreneurial women, but I really had a heart and I had something to teach nine to five women, I could bring in one offer 
that my overall umbrella is entrepreneurial women, but I have one offer that's for women in a nine to five to break free into the entrepreneur life. So you could have blank women, busy women, ambitious women, um, millennial women, like whatever it might be. You could have like an overarching theme, okay, of women and have a couple offers that are for moms specifically, right? Um, and I would say, so I help women reconnect to their creative soul. I want to know what does that mean? Why? Right? So like I help women reconnect to their creative soul so that they can, like, what does that allow me to do? What's the tangible pleasure point? If I connect to my, if I reconnect to my creative soul, what does that do for me? How do I benefit from that? Right? Um, Sarah says, follow up. Do I train my downline my way in that case or introduce my way and the company way and let them pick their way? Do I train my downline my way or introduce my way and the company way and let them pick their way? <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Okay, so for this one, Sarah, you'll notice a lot of the times you'll attract a version of you, right? You'll attract women. Like I attract, attract very masculine, dominating women who are craving more of the feminine energy, right? Because we're hitting burnout because that is how I am. So I can literally see some version of myself in my clients. So the truth is that if you feel icky about it, they might feel icky about it, most likely, like a, a large majority of them, if not all. So I would say train them in a way that you've seen to be successful. So if you have tried your way and you've seen success with it, teach them your way, right? But if you haven't seen success with your way yet, it's, it's good, I think, to show them the way that other people have seen success and say, here's kind of the breakdown. And then from there, you can say, here's how I've shifted things. Here's what I do. Take what you want, leave the rest. Do what you want to do, right? So if you have an upline that runs things the way the company runs them, they have trainings that are accessible to your team, right? So you can have that, but then you can create your own training that's your way they can watch whatever they want to watch, and then they can find their own way in that. Oh, don't be sorry. <laughs> I just was saying, say that, that was fast. I love it. Yay, Elizabeth. I'm glad that you love that. Yay, yay, yay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You guys, more questions. We're only 22 minutes in. I drank so much coffee for this. Makes sense. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, well, I'm going to go to, I did a post, yes, three days ago, two days ago. And people shared what they're struggling with. So maybe I can riff on some of these for a minute until you guys have more questions. Those that are here live and those that post on the thread, like you guys get first priority. So use me as much as you want. So let's see. Lisa says, I don't know how to put into words what my struggles are. It's not even necessarily struggles. More like I'm getting in my own way even when I'm working on not getting in my own way, if that makes sense. Or I'm getting discouraged because I'm not yet seeing monetary results even though I see things happening in front of me. You feel me. And then Caitlin says, I feel this. I think this is a balance. It's like a dance. Leaning into trust and taking de declarative action. But girl, I know it can be a roller coaster. Let me know if you guys, my favorite wine. Um, it depends. If it's summer and it's hot out, I like a cold glass of Chardonnay. Um, I don't have a, I'm not a brand junkie though. I just pick whatever at the store, the label that sticks out to me, if I'm being honest. Um, so a cold glass of Chardonnay in the summer. If it's evening, especially in the fall and winter, a good glass of Cabernet Sauvignon. And if I'm celebrating a beautiful glass of bubbly, I like Prosecco, I like Champagne, I like Rosé, like sparkling Rosé. I don't like regular Rosé. Like Yasue Rosé, not my jam at all. Okay, so she's getting discouraged because she's not yet seeing monetary results even though she's seeing things happen in front of me. So, <clears throat> what do I wanna say about this? When we're focused on the numbers, it's easy to get discouraged. When we're focused on time and how long it's taking, it's easy to get discouraged. But time is irrelevant. Time does not actually exist. We give meaning to time. This is something I learned from Melanie Ann Lair. We give meaning to time. Time is a man-made thing that is used to serve us, to help us, but we act like time is working against us. We create time. What does it mean to you? 
So if I think about when I first started my business four years ago and I was like, God, I just want to be there. I just want to see this number. I just want to be there. And I was at that moment. It felt so, 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 so far away. Even last April, when I wanted to be making the money that I started making in July, it felt so far away. I was like, oh my God, like I just want to be there. And now I'm there. Of course, I still have goals. I'm still moving forward. I'm still advancing. But now I'm there where I wanted to be four years ago or, you know, four months ago. And it's like I blinked and I'm here. Like it happened so freaking fast. But we can start to act like literally time is working against us and we get anxious about it. When what the fuck is time? You give it the meaning, right? Time is happening so freaking fast. So instead focusing on, yes, the goal, what's your goal, right? Numbers are important. It's important to have that masculine strategy, the masculine facts and the analytics and things you can measure. But are you doing your part, right? Are you taking action, inspired action, aligned action, what feels good in your soul, building consistency, building credibility, building the foundation, doing the things you know you're called to do and know that you've worked with a business coach or you've you know, watched trainings, listened to podcasts or whatever. You know the foundational pieces of building a business. So you're doing your part. And then it's the delicate dance between dancing with the co-creative power, whoever you believe it is, God, source, spirit, angels, universe, so, you know, whoever you're co-creating. So it's all happening in divine timing. If I choose to believe in the moments where it was frustrating in the moments where I was like, I just want to be there. I just want to be there. If I focused in that moment on if it's all happening for me, why am I so stressed out? I'm doing my part. I know I go to bed at night knowing I did what I could, knowing that I gave my best, knowing that I showed up, I played full out and the rest is happening. It's happening exactly as it's meant to. I have no idea what's being shifted behind the scenes in my favor. I have no idea. And I can choose to drop into that trust in those moments of fear. Then the fear starts to dissipate. I look at people who have, have been where I stand and are where I want to be. And I'm like, okay, cool. If she can do it, I can do it. Just keep going. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep seeing the vision, right? So that piece, right? But then it's also not focusing so hard. So for example, I really, during launches, I get super stressed about the numbers. And I'm like, oh my God, I thought this would be sold out by now. And oh my God, why? I you know there's four people, but there's still four spots left. And I'm so focused on that number. And it's not actually about the number. It's about the energetics. It's about the spaciousness that is still available and not making it this dense thing of like, Mm, this like thud in my heart of like, oh, I still have four spaces to fill. It's like, I have filled four beautiful spaces and what a blessing that there's still four spaces open for the exact perfect woman. I can visualize her. I can picture her. I can see her. I know what it's going to be like when she says, yes, I'm acting as if it's already happening, right? I'm in that energy of being already sold out. So it's decided it's done. If it's for my highest good and for the highest good of all, then I have nothing to fear. I literally have nothing to fear because it's happening for me. I'm co-creating. It's not all on me, right? So I think in the moments where I was seeing results in front of me, you're seeing things happening, you're seeing things shift, you're feeling the shift, but you're not seeing the money yet. You have to trust and believe and know that it's coming. It's decided. It's already done. Like, duh, this is happening. Time is just a thing that I made up in my head. So like, why am I so stressed about it? Take the time factor out and know that, oh my God, look at all that I've created. Look at all that I can celebrate, all the wins that I've had, all the shift that is happening. And I can anchor into that and celebrate even the small wins. Like, okay, if I'm not making money, how's my engagement doing? Is my engagement up? Awesome. I'm building quality connection and relationship, right? If I, if I notice that, you know, I'm getting more messages of people inquiring Amazing, amazing, amazing. If I get one person that signs up for that consultation, are you celebrating the shit out of that? Like, oh my God, I signed one person. One person said yes to a consultation. This is incredible, right? Are you celebrating or are you so focused on, oh, it's just one, it's just one person or it's just engagement. That doesn't mean anything. But the truth is like something else I learned from Melanie is she talked about like, we're so focused on attracting money, but we don't attract money. Money is an energy, right? We attract people with money. Their energy is attracted to our energy. We exchanged energy. 
boom, you have money. They have an experience. They have invested. They are stepping up. They have results, right? So why are we so focused on the numbers when there's a million things that play into it and there's a million things that we can celebrate and it's all happening for us. We have nothing to fear at all. And then it's making sure, yeah, you're doing the damn thing. You're doing your part because it's not just about sitting there and being like, okay, it's happening for me. I've got my pie right. My money, my money crystal, here I am. Okay, bring me a million dollars. I'm ready for it. Like, are you playing your part? Are you doing the damn thing? Are you doing the damn thing every single day, right? I hope that that is helpful. Lisa Dooley, thank you for the question. Okay, let's see. Um, Elizabeth says, good morning, Kat. Hi, hi, hi. My original line was I teach moms how to reconnect to their soul's calling who've lost their identity through motherhood. That was what I started with. I still feel very much into this. So I think I will create specifically around that. And as per women, I'm going to sit with that one. So this feels, I mean, I'm not going to lie. This feels wordy to me. I think we can cut some out. Like we're kind of repeating ourselves. So I teach moms how to reconnect to their soul's calling who've lost their identity through motherhood. That was okay. So I personally believe a lot of times in our hook, in a, uh, talking to our client, we start to tell them the how, like, I'm going to help you reconnect to your soul's calling. And they're like, I don't even know what that means. What's my soul's calling? Why does this matter? I'm confused. Right. For me, for example, if I was to say, um, what's a good example. I've had many before many, many, many. Um, I used to tell, I used, okay, here's for example, I used to say like, I'm going to help teach you. I'm going to help you find out who you are so that you can blank, blank, blank. And people are like, I don't know. And you know what? I didn't make any money because people are like, I don't care who, like, why does that matter? The average Joe on the street that I was helping at the time doesn't know like why it matters to find out who you are in the spiritual world in where I, in where I am and what in the personal development I had done and, and the work that I had done on my personal growth. Like I knew what that meant. I knew that me finding out who I truly was at my core mattered that before I could add any strategy, I had to figure out who the hell I even was. I knew that that mattered. So I started speaking that way. That's not the verbiage that my ideal client was using. She was like, what you want to, you're going to, I have to pay you how much to find out who I am. Like I know who I am. I'm Olivia Celine. I like wine. I like coffee. I go for long walks on the beach. Like, I don't need to know what are you talking about? Right. But I know that that was a game changer. So when they get in the door, I'll give them the, the tools and the exercises and the, tr the training and the coaching on, let's figure out who you are. But on the outside, they don't know that they need that yet, right? The door needs to look appealing to them. It needs to draw them in with what they want. What is this mom who's lost her identity, right? And she's laying there and she's like so stressed out. She's got kid puke in her hair. She's got diarrhea in her eyes, like whatever it might be. Like, is that, I don't know. I don't know if that happens, but She's got all these things. I'm not a mom, obviously. And she's stressed out and you want to help her. What's going through her head? What is the verbiage that she's using? What are the words that she's using that if she applies, if she wants blank, she knows, oh my God, I have to go work with Elizabeth. She's going to help me with that. And then inside you're going to help her reconnect to her soul's calling. She doesn't need to know that part yet, right? I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to articulate it. That's okay. Keep playing with it. Keep playing with it. Keep playing with it. One of my favorite things to do when I'm figuring this out is I just write a bunch of shit down and I'll work with my coach on it. Um, but I also, for verbiage, I will ask those women around me in my life that don't really know what I do, but they might, they would be an ideal client if they would have ever hired a coach, not that they were going to, but they, I could say, Hey, does this make sense? And if they say, I don't know what the hell you're trying to say here, then I was like, okay, what's the verbiage I can use? Or I will ask questions. I will do market research. I will ask questions on um, posts where I'm like, hey, what are you struggling with in this area? Or you could say, moms, what are you struggling with since having kids? What's been your biggest struggle as a woman outside of being a mom, right? And you can see what is the verbiage that they're using and you can use that. It's like a trick. It's free. They're using it. You can use their words, right? So like Lisa, for example, when she said, I'm not seeing monetary results yet, but I am seeing things happening in front of me. I could create a program and one of the verbiage pieces could be, do you ever feel like you're discouraged because you're seeing things happen, but you're not seeing the monetary results yet? Boom. Lisa goes, oh my God, it's like she's in my head. Oh my God. That's like what I wrote in my journal this morning. 
ooh, ooh, like it, it gets me in the gut. Like that's the, that's why we want to use their words because you want to hit them in the gut. Right. So even for me, like with my more umbrella of helping women um, up level in their business or upgrade their business or whatever I say and reignite the passion in their relationship, it's, it's broad. So in my content, I have to get super, super, super clear about the tangible words that they're using that you're using in order to draw you in so that you're like, yes, this is for me. Or you're like, oh God, that is not for me. That person love them. Not for me. I am not everybody's cup, the everybody's cup of tea. I'm not everybody's coach. And I am totally okay with that because it means it's more space for me to have the right people that work with me, that we're going to mesh well. We'll both move forward together, right? Um, let's see here. Erica says, if you don't have a huge following yet, where do you advertise your first mastermind? Mm. So I don't think numbers mean much. I mean, you could have a hundred people on your email list and you could book, you know, sell out a mastermind. You could have a million people on your email list and you could sell out a mastermind. I think that it's about the quality of the engagement, the quality of the connection, the credibility that you've built, the like, know, and trust that you have built, the value that you have added, the conversations you're having with people, the excitement that you've built. Um, that is what matters. It doesn't matter what, how many followers you have, right? Um, but I will say advertising, um, there's re really not many places you can advertise besides your personal pages. Many groups won't let you advertise unless it's like a promo day and it's usually in a thread. So like on Wednesdays in here, you could share in the Wednesday Q, like the Wednesday promo picture, you could share in the comments about your mastermind. Um, but I truly believe like everything I've ever sold out and everything I've ever sold has come through my personal pages. You could, however, start to pitch yourself to be on podcasts and people could interview you and then you can build your audience that way. Um, you could be in some kind of summit or you could ask to be interviewed somewhere. You could host a summit and then get like a bunch of different speakers and then you would all pitch that to your audiences. And then if people connect with you, they'll continue to follow you and they'll see it on your personal pages. You can run Facebook ads. I've never done that, but you could do that. Um, you could talk about it on Instagram stories. You could talk about it on Instagram. You could talk about it um, on your podcast. You could talk about it on YouTube. You can talk about it anywhere. Um, but I really do think it's like, have you built the audience that's engaged that is craving more? And sometimes it takes us launching something and seeing like, okay, I don't have a large following. Totally cool. I don't have a large following. If we're being honest, my numbers don't mean jack shit. But I've built credibility and value and a foundation. So when I sell things, certain people say, hell yes, sign me up because they've built this relationship with me. We've, we've connected on a human level. And then the people that are still figuring me out aren't going to buy yet. And that's totally okay too. Or there's people following me that will never buy for me. And that's cool too. That's why numbers don't mean anything. So when it comes to advertising, it's like creating that hype and getting people excited, launching on your page. And then as far as, is like, how do you advertise it places when you don't have a large following? It's like, how are you growing your audience? It's about getting more eyes, more connections, more humans plugged into your page where you're advertising. So posting in Facebook groups and just adding value, again, being on podcasts, summits, webinars, um, all of the places, connecting and networking with other entrepreneurs, right? And then you have them, if they, fall, if they fall in love with you, then they come back to your page and they will start to follow you. And when you're selling or advertising your mastermind, they're like, duh, I'm in, I already love Erica, right? So it's really about not the followers or the numbers. It's about the engagement and the quality and the credibility that you're building and that like genuine audience. My audience, I mean, I would hope, I'm going to say this, you guys are here. There's a lot of you here that have followed me for a long time. You trust me. We've built a relationship. So when I sell something, when I advertise something, some of you buy because you, you, you have this connection with me. But that doesn't mean I have a lot of followers because I actually don't. You know, does that help Erica? Let's see. What did you say? I should make a live maybe and talk about what I'll be teaching. Have you ever launched anything that didn't sell out? I've definitely had flopped launches. I mean, I've been doing this for four years. There have definitely been things <laughs> that have not sold. Um, hundred percent. There have been programs I've done where I didn't sell one. I know when Crystal and I were in business together, there were some that didn't sell. Um, there was some like my very first program I ever ran by myself back in May. Um, there was like seven people in it. I had space. I told myself 10, I had seven, so it didn't sell out. Um, and then the next time I had 18, like I just continued to build 
my audience and my, my engagement and the quality of what I was putting out so that when I sold it again, people were ready for it. It just, my audience wasn't ready for it yet. They were still figuring me out. It was still a little confusing because I had come from everything with Crystal to now I'm by myself, but I'm still with Crystal running our podcast. Like I had a confusing brand transition. Transitioning and branding and niche market is always going to be, you'll, it'll be a little, it'll take a minute for people to understand fully. Um, but as far as making a live and talking about what I'll be teaching, yeah, I mean, in my mastermind, I walk people through my entire launch process. Like I, I walk you through everything. Um, there's live videos I've done where I walk you through my launch process. So I'm not going to do that much here. Um, but I, I definitely, I create a lot of hype. I do a lot of live video. I post a lot. Some people like to watch. Some people like to listen. Some people like to read about it. Um, I have a sales page. I have, you know, people that message me and I send them the sales page. I post a lot. I'm present a lot. And um, I'm visible and I'm loud about it. I don't apologize for it. I own my space. I own my expertise. I own the shit out of this mastermind because I believe in it with everything in me and it sold out because I've seen results from it. The first time I showed up a lot more and I had to build a lot more engagement because I didn't have testimonials yet. I didn't have celebrations or wins yet because I hadn't run it yet. So it took me time. I hope that that helps. Good luck though. That's exciting. Yay. Exciting. Exciting. Hi guys. Hi Kate. Hi Erica. Hi Melissa. Hi Lorraine. So many beautiful, beautiful people. Um, let's see. Sarah says, how do you track your client's progress and keep your mind on their goals? Spreadsheet or notebook? Um, client's progress. So with my clients, I type all of their notes. So every single one-on-one -on -one call with my clients, I type, type, type while they talk. And then I send them their notes after the call. So I have a full log, like I have a Google folder with their exact notes in it, right? Um, so it's, it's all of their notes from every single, so I have a client, for example, I've worked with her for three months and then, um, she just re-signed on for another six month contract and I have all of our calls for those first three months already in her Google folder that I can go back and revisit if I want to like remember something or whatever. And then I'm, I'm keeping track of that the whole time, but then I also journal about my clients. So the beautiful thing about working with a coach is not just having access to their brain. <laughs> um, they've done what you want to do. They are where you want to be. It's where you see your next level, but so you hire them, right? You have access to their brain. Freaking love my coach, but you also get their energy behind your goals and what you're manifesting. You do it together. So when I was first starting to launch, I worked one-on-one -on -one so freaking hard with my coach. Like we were in it together. She, I'm updating her every time a spot sells, I'm updating her. Every single time that my clients sell out a spot, I'm celebrating them. Every single time that they have a win, I have a win. I'm freaking out with them. We're dying together. Whenever they're in doubt or struggling, I'm there to help pick them up. I'm journaling about, okay, this month, this is what we're all creating. I'm so excited about it. Here's what I'm creating. Here's what Melissa's creating. Here's what Erica's creating. Here's what Lorraine is creating. I am in it. Universe, we're freaking ready for it. Like, let's do the damn thing. So my energy is behind it. My thoughts are behind it. When we're in our calls together, we're building it together. It's a very joint process. So I don't use spreadsheets for this. Spreadsheets, the only thing I use spreadsheets for is like podcast tracking for like titles and scheduling and all of that. Um, and my income tracker. I don't use spreadsheets for anything else. I'm a hands to paper. Like, I just believe that is where the magic happens. Um, let's see here. Erica, yes, you have a good live presence. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Well, stay tuned. I'm going to run a course on the chakra system and how to balance and clear. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love that. Erica, is Aislinn your coach? Yes, I've worked with her for seven months now, and I just signed on for another six months. Um, Sarah, love it. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah, it's co-creating. It's magic. Magic, magic, magic. Does anyone else have questions? Let's see this post if anyone else have questions. Um, awkward silence. We're all just going to sit here. Um, that's why I need music on. I just wish that Facebook wouldn't delete my videos if I did that. Um, they delete my videos anyway, though. Let's be real. So, okay, let's see. Madden asked, how do you bless and release and not let the negative opinions and actions of others drag you down? So I've talked about this before. It's all about boundaries, right? About boundaries. <clears throat> so for example, my grandma the other day posted on my post when I posted about, I was on Coraline's podcast, Lighten the Fuck Up. 
And I was interviewed on her podcast and I shared it. And my grandma wrote this whole thing about how Jesus is always watching and we're always face to face with him. And that I shouldn't say things that I wouldn't say to him face to face, which was ironic because in my prayer journal, me and me and God were homies. And um, I used the same language I would use on live video as I use in my prayer journal. Um, I don't think he loves me any less. I think that he loves me for being exactly who I am, who he created me to be. So she posted this thing and I freaking blew up. Like I was mad. I was like hot. I was like this. I was like, why, 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 why is she trying to rip me off? Like what? Like why is she trying to rip me open? She's giving me a new one. She doesn't get what I'm saying. And here's the thing. Other people's opinions are their opinions. Other people's, their, their thoughts about it, their beliefs about it are theirs. And that's okay. I, whenever I go into this moment of like being mad, I have to let go a little bit and realize, and I look at the situation, I let myself be mad for a minute because it's annoying. Um, but I also realize this is who she is and I'm not going to change that just as I don't want her to change my beliefs and who I am. I cannot try to change her beliefs and who she is. This is my grandma. I love her. So we're going to agree to disagree. So I wrote a very like well thought out response back and then I deleted it. So don't go look for it because my dad messaged me. My dad told me to delete it and that my grandma doesn't understand Facebook and then I need to just delete it. So I did. But like, for example, I talked about it. Oh, if you guys haven't listened to today's podcast episode, oh, one of my favorites ever. We talked about this exact subject about believing different things in your family and how to have that conversation. But I just know that their opinions and their thoughts don't have to mean anything to me unless I allow it to unless I allow it to other people's perception of me is not my responsibility. That's on them. If I constantly am showing up thinking that, well, what if this person says this? And what if this person says this? And this person is negative and this person's giving this to me and this person's thinking this, like I will run myself ragged and I will never show up. I would be stuck in a hole over in the corner and I would not be where I am today. It's about me creating boundaries. I have a list of like three to five people, this is a Brene Brown thing. She says, have a little teeny tiny, teeny tiny piece of paper, have like five, three to five people on there whose opinions do matter, who you do have in your life, who do trust you and support your highest good, have their opinions, their names or whatever on this piece of paper, tie it, like fold it up teeny, teeny, tiny and put it in your wallet or put it somewhere that's always with you. And whenever you start to wonder, you start to let it creep in that, oh, well, my grandma said this, or my coworker said this, or like that girl said this, or like, oh my God, that person thinks this. What you do is you take out your little piece of paper and you realize, oh, their, their name's not on this piece of paper. Therefore, their opinion does not have to stick to me. I can let it go. It goes in one ear, it goes out the other. I don't have to keep it. I don't have to hang on to it. If you're letting other people's opinions and negative actions drag you down, you don't have boundaries with those people and you're allowing that. So take the ownership back, take the power back. You're giving them the power by saying that their negative opinions are dragging you down. That's you giving your power away. Take your power back, right? And stand there and say, okay, I can either choose to let this affect me or I can realize this person isn't on my list. So I don't have to hang on to it, like whoop out. So you think of this boundary, you think of this bubble that you have, it's four feet out in front of you, four feet to each side, four feet behind you. It's this big, beautiful bubble. You can pick whatever color you want. Mine's a beautiful opalescent. I know my friend Autumn's is like a glittery pink. Um, some people's is black, you know, whatever it might be, you do you. And you've got this color in this bubble and you can choose what you're letting in and what you're letting out of it. So I know if that person's not on one of my five comments or five people in this little list, I know that if when my grandma says something, I can either let it seep into my bubble and drain my energy, or I can take my power back and I can say, oh, I have a boundary here. Bing, and it bounce, oh, I scared my dog. Sorry, baby, it's okay, I'm sorry, go back to bed. <laughs> um, it can bounce off of my bubble and it deflects. I'm the one that allows it to seep in if my boundaries are out of place. So I would say, how do you do this? You set boundaries and you bless and release if they're not one of your few people. If they are one of your few people, you can choose to let it deflect as well. Like sometimes my husband will say like, or for example, um, Shannon's husband, when we interviewed him on the podcast on Monday, he said afterwards, he's like, I think you guys should interview this way. He is one of her five people. He's her husband, right? But she's like, babe, you don't fully understand like the vision of this. So I appreciate your feedback, but I'm bouncing it off. I'm not going to hang on to it. Bless and release. Love you so much. Okay, thanks. Bye.
right? So that is what I would say for that Madden. Um, I hope that that helps. We also have two podcast episodes on this topic, uh, episode number 39 and episode 55, if you want more on that. Okay, let's see here. Sarah, is that iced coffee? If not, it's probably cold as shit by now. Yeah, um, so here's a fun fact about me. <laughs> and I can take one more question after Elizabeth. So if anyone else has a question, let me know. Um, <laughs> hi, Nikki. Hi, Jennifer. So my coffee, like this coffee cup, I will drink about like half of it in the morning. And then I fill it back up. And then I will heat this up probably three different times over the course of the afternoon while I finish it. Sometimes I drink it kind of cold, like it's cold right now. Definitely cold. Sometimes I'll throw ice in it and make it iced coffee because, you know. Uh, but sometimes I'll just drink it cold or I'll heat it back up. Like yesterday, I think I heated my coffee up like three times. I know a microwave is bad for me, okay? I know, but I can't. I can't help it. Sarah, I saw that. I loved your response to her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I had to delete it because my dad was just like, I don't want conflict. Um, in my family, we don't talk about feelings. We don't talk about conflict. We just ignore it. We brush it under the rug, which is so funny, um, ironically enough, that I became a coach because growing up, like feelings were not a thing. We don't talk about our feelings. You hustle through, right? Elizabeth, um, but I don't condone that now, obviously. Talk about your feelings, sit with them, be with them, work through them, okay? <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, how do you get out of your head when doubt creeps in? Yesterday, I was all in my feelings. I did a lot of crying, and that felt good, but it took me a minute to remind myself that I got this. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that you're human, and it's okay to feel that way. In fact, yesterday, I Zoomed with one of my very best friends who had that exact same feeling of doubt of questioning of, oh my God, what am I going to do of crying of, I just don't know how much more I can handle of when is this going to happen? And she just cried. She cried and she let it out and she needed to, that was her release. And guess what? Today she sold something out. Like it, yesterday she was questioning it all today. It sold out. Like it needs to sometimes feelings come in and, and we try to give them all of this meaning like, Oh, what does this doubt mean? Is this doubt back from when I was six and my dad said this and now it's sticking with me and like, Oh my God, like I need to rewrite it. I need to rework it. No, not all of the time. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, yes, our feelings mean something and we need to give them meaning. We need to figure out what the underlying thing is. If it's a pattern, if this is a continued thing, then yeah, what's going on. Okay. But sometimes there's days where you wake up and your energy is off. A lot of times for me, this is when I'm on my period. My energy is a little bit lower. My boundaries are kind of down. So I'm kind of letting things hit me more. I'm, I'm sinking things in more. I, I'm, I'm holding on to things. I'm feeling less than. I'm feeling like I'm questioning myself. And I just have that moment. And I have to be with it. I think the hardest thing we do is we try to be like, I'm just going to do my personal development to get out of this. Like this is just a funk. Just hustle through. Exactly what I was just talking about, right? But no, sometimes you just got to sit with it and you got to be with it. And what you actually have to do is work through it emotionally, let it work its way through so that you can be clear and spacious on the other side and be ready to attract in what it is that you want, right? So for you, Elizabeth, I would say when doubt creeps in, how do I get out of my head? First of all, I let myself cry like you did. I love that. Cry, 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 cry. Set the intention that this crying is you're getting it out. It is what is no longer serving you is coming out. It's the same way that we bleed once a month. The shit that's not serving us is coming out. When we cry, the same thing is happening. When we sweat, when I set an intention in a workout, when I'm feeling like I'm just really mad or I'm really angry or I've got a lot going on, I use my workout and I'm, I imagine every bead of sweat that comes out of me, this is what's no longer serving me. I'm leaving it on the floor here. I'm leaving it on the mat. I am not taking it with me the rest of the day. And I feel a million times lighter, right? So I would ask you, do you feel better this morning? Do you feel a little bit lighter, a little more spacious, a little bit more clear? But I don't think it's about who can get out of this the fastest. Like, oh, I, I have doubt. Shit, shit, shit. What, what's my affirmation? Where's my crystal? Oh my God, I can do this. It's not always about that. Now, for me in these moments, I'll usually message like one of my girlfriends um, who gets this world or I'll message my coach and I'll say, oh my God, I'm having a moment. And then like I just did this the other day, I messaged my coach and I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Da, da, da. And I went on this whole long tangent when my boundaries are down and I let comparison creep in. And then I, it was so weird. It was like right after I sold out my launch, like I should be in high celebration feeling so good. But like the next day I had a day of doubt and I was like, what the hell is happening? Oh my God. And I'm questioning things. And she's talking me through it. And then the next day I'm like, Oh, by the way, I'm declaring right now because I'm, I said this when I was 24, I was like, I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. I just, I told my coach, I was like, I just want to put that out there. I want to be a millionaire. I've said that since I was 24, I've got two and a half years left. 
I believe that I can do it. I finally, for once in my life, believe that it's possible. It doesn't just feel like this far out thing. It feels possible. And she was like, oh my God, I'm so here for this. Okay. So it's like, it's a wave. We go like this. We're women. We're emotional beings. I'm a cancer. I'm a feeler. I cry. I doubt. I struggle. I have days where I question everything, right? But then there's also days where I'm on top of the freaking world and I'm like, watch out world. I can do anything. Just because we've been in the personal development game for a while or, you know, we're, we're coaches for a while or we do this work means that we're just immune to it or we've gotten to this point of being enlightened and now, now I don't struggle anymore. The struggle, the days of doubt, the days where fear creeps in, the days where we cry, my friends, that's the contrast. It allows the high highs and the wins and the celebrations to feel really damn good because we know what it feels like to not feel good. If we didn't know what it felt like to have days of doubt or to not feel like we could do it, then we wouldn't know how to handle the highs. They wouldn't feel as exciting. The contrast is what makes life life. It's the human experience, right? Does that help, Elizabeth? And in the moments of doubt where I'm like struggling and I've, I've cried it out and I'm still feeling there, that's when I'll ask myself like what's one thing that I can do, one thing that I can do, to start feeling a little bit more like myself, to start feeling a little bit more high vibe. I've been in this for a couple days. I don't want to be here anymore. What's one thing I can do? Two things I can do. Okay, now I did this. Now I want to do something else. Like, can I work out? Can I go to have dinner with one of my girlfriends? Can I, you know, um, go take a bath? Can I go whatever? Like, what do you need to do to get back to feeling your best? One step at a time. Cheers to you, Melissa. Hi, hi. Cheers. Um, Sarah says reheating coffee over and over. I mean, oh my God. Yes. You get me on a soul level. I do. I feel lighter. Today is a new day and back in creating mode for me. It's not when is it going to happen? I know everything is happening. It's the feeling of, oh my God, I don't want to let my family down. Hmm. Would you say that you're happy on these days where you're feeling like a new day or like, I know it's going to happen. I'm so here for it. It's happening. You feel happy. The delay kills me. <laughs> Feels so awkward. Okay. What I'm going to say is if you feel happy, isn't that all your family wants? I am happy. Isn't that all that they want? Don't they just want Elizabeth to feel happy, whole, fulfilled, present, excited, light, right? I think sometimes we put this pressure on ourselves to have it all together all of the time. And what, you know, what if though I don't hit this goal and then like my family is going to be disappointed in me. If you gave it your all, if you were happy, then that's all that matters. The rest will get figured out. It's happening for us, right? It's all happening exactly as it's meant to. We don't have anything to fear. So when we take that pressure off of ourselves and we just ask ourselves, how can I feel happy and excited? Like, cause the goals don't actually matter. That's the truth of the matter, right? We think, oh, well, when I hit, you know, $10,000, then all of a sudden none of my problems will exist, but that's not true. You'll get to $10,000 and you'll be like, well, now what? Okay. It's about fixing the problems now. And it's about saying, what's the feeling that I'm associating with that goal right? What's the feeling that I'm associating with that goal? And how can I experience that now? Right? So for example, when I wanted to hit my first five figure month, I knew that hitting five figures and I wrote about it in my journal. It was like, I will feel fulfilled. I will feel excited. I will feel grateful. I will feel abundant. I will feel capable. I will feel powerful. I will feel, um, you know, uh, honored. I will feel humble. I'll feel all of these things. And I started to say, how can I start to feel that now? What else makes me feel that way? And that even got me in the energetic frequency to then attract it and create it. But if I was feeling scarcity and lack and not enough and doubting all of the time, I'm not going to attract the $10,000 because I'm not going to know what to do with it. It's attracted to me. If I'm, up, if I'm operating down here and the what I want is operating up here, it's trying to find me and it's in my area, but it can't get to me, <laughs> right? I feel like I'm doing like a, like a dance. Okay, let's see. 
I love you. I needed this today. I love you. I love you. I love you. So good. Sarah, what PD books would you recommend to a new entrepreneur? You have You Are a Badass and How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness. Oh, just that's just one book. Uh, you Are a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness. Um, God, there's like a million. Um, I would say, based on what we talked about today, with like being multi-passionate, if Olivia's still on, um, The Pumpkin Plan, great book, The Pumpkin Plan. I loved the book, if you are um, spiritual of any sort, The Circle Maker, Mark Batterson, literally will change your faith life, insane. Um, you Are Badass was really good. One of my favorite money books is Creating Money, Attracting Abundance. I would also say Catherine Zenkina's Money Manifestation book. I actually recommended that to a girl. She wants to work with me, but she's like, I'm really struggling with money. I said, why don't you start with this book? And she's manifested like $500 or something in the last week. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. This is crazy. It's actually working. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have like, here's the thing. <clears throat> There's a million books I could have you read. Oh, the book Pussy. A Reclamation, the most game-changing book of your entire life, which I think the, that book, it's not related to business, but when you own the concepts that are in that book and when you, in, you know, you're taking action on what you're learning in that book, it will a wholly 150% affect how you show up in business. But um, I think we can over-consume sometimes. So I just remember like personal development is super important. Yes. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I posted a shit ton of them yesterday. I listen. I read a lot of books. I do these things, but I take my time with it. And I, some days I don't consume at all. I just create, you know, and, and for example, I'm in a course right now about money. And so I, that's my personal development most days. Like I'm just getting in like 30 minutes of that training every day. And that's what I'm focused on because sometimes when we read too many books, we listen to too many podcasts, we're doing too many things all of the time and we're consuming, 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 we're drowning in our own thoughts of all of the shit that's going on. We've consumed it all. It's sitting here and then we're not implementing it all. We're not taking action and we're overwhelmed and we're like, Oh my God, there's so many things. And we're trying to find the next secret to success in one of these books. And that's not always the case. Sometimes you just got to do, right? So the biggest thing is, are you taking action on the things that you have read and that you are reading and take your time with them? Sarah says, Elizabeth, what, have, what I have learned between my family and I is everyone's expectations of you are going to be different, 100%. If it makes you happy, then your parents become naturally happy because you're making progress that you want totally. Um, yeah, for example, my family, which I talked about this in the podcast today, they don't agree with a lot of the stuff that I teach. Um, we have very differing beliefs on some things, but they still want me to be happy and they still support me as a human. They just don't necessarily agree with the means all of the time, right? Um, Jennifer says, own your glow is so good too. Ooh, I love it. Sarah, very spiritual. I read tarot's and very in tune with myself. I love that. Elizabeth, that book is insane. I'm reading it right now. Yes. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, good. So yeah, if everyone wants to share their favorite personal development books in the comments, by all means, share them. Um, I obviously have an entire sh bookshelf of books. So I guess like I, what a better question would have be would have been would be to ask you is um, what like subject are you struggling the most with? right? Because like for being multi-passionate and wanting to teach on all of the things, the pumpkin plan is great. For money, creating money, secrets of a millionaire mind, you are a badass at making money. Those are great, beautiful books. Um, spiritual, the circle maker is beautiful. Um, Light is a new black is beautiful. Um, God, there's a million. So it's really just about kind of what you're looking for. The book Girl Code, amazing book. Amazing book. So yeah, that's what I would have. Awesome. 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 That's what I would say. I hope that this was helpful. Did you guys love this? Give me some love if you loved this. And if you guys want to do this again next Friday, let me know in the comments below. My almond milk does get kind of funky though when I let my coffee sit. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of weird. Give me some love if you want to do this next Friday. I feel like I might not be able to see if you guys are loving this. Okay, we'll end here. I'll do it next Friday. Leave some comments below. Sarah, being able to embrace success and leaving the doubt behind is my biggest thing. Being able to embrace success and leaving the doubt behind is my biggest thing. Let me think about that. I don't have one off the top of my head. I know I've read one, but 
I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. We'll talk about it in the mastermind too, that specifically, because that is the thing, right? I can give you strategy all day long. You could read every single book, but if you aren't reprogramming the thoughts that are happening, you're not going to have what you want. You will not, uh, you won't create success. You won't attract success. And if you do, you won't be able to hang on to it because your brain will talk you out of it and you'll let it go. So we'll talk about that in the mastermind. Erica says, yes, yay, all the praise hands. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for drinking coffee with me, kind of. <laughs> I will see you guys next Friday for another Q&A. So make sure to watch out for the Q&A thread post that goes live next Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Central. It will be up. And then you guys can post your questions for the next few days. And we will do this again at 10 a.m. next Friday. So I love you guys. I love you. I love you. Have the most amazing Friday. Go kick some ass. Go take some massive action. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.